NASA is going to bring samples back from Mars, and I got to go to the lab where they're figuring out how to do it. It was pretty cool. I visited JPL, or NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, as part of their NASA social event on February 10th. JPL is where some of NASA's coolest missions call home. The Mars rovers, the Deep Space Network, and, surprisingly, the center of the universe. We got to see lots of cool things on this visit. From MOXIE, a project designed to turn CO2 into usable oxygen on Mars, to Aerogel, to the clean room where the Mars 2020 rover was assembled and shipped out just a day before. But to me, one of the coolest things was how NASA is working on trying to get samples from Mars back to Earth. Because so far, everything that we've sent to Mars has just stayed there. Landers, rovers, everything. But the Mars 2020 mission is going to drive around Mars and take core samples at cool, interesting places. It's then going to seal them up, leave them on the ground, and a future mission will actually go back and get them. Mars sample return is, uh, the, the remainder of it, is composed of two missions that follow after 2020, a sample retrieval lander and an Earth return orbiter, both of which will launch in 2026. So uh, the lander will land on Mars in around 2028, and it will carry with it three key uh, payload elements. The first is a sample fetch rover, which is a small rover that will be uh, built by the European Space Agency. Uh, the second is a Mars Ascent vehicle, which is a rocket that you launch from the surface of Mars. Uh, and the third element is a sample transfer arm, which you can see mocked up behind me in this lab, that's used for transferring the tubes from the fetch rover and into the Mars Ascent vehicle. Uh, once the lander lands on the surface, the rover will drive over to where the tubes are on the surface and then pick them up and load them into a rack on the rover. And you can see the rack, it's uh, the plastic thing on the left side of the rover there. Uh, once it's loaded all the tubes from the ground into the rack, it drives back to the lander. Once at the lander, the arm will grab the tubes from the rover, uh, from the rover's rack, and insert them into the sample container that's in the front of the rocket. And I have here a replica of the uh, sample container that's in the front of the rocket, and the arm will put the tubes into the sample container just like that. <clears throat> Once all the tubes are loaded, you take the lid and you put the lid on top of, of the uh, container, just like this. I'm not going to close it because it only goes one way. Um, and uh, <laughs> once it's closed, then you're ready to launch the rocket. So once you launch the rocket uh, into space, then it will uh, jettison the, the container, which when it's all closed together has generally this shape to it, uh, and it will be ready for the orbiter to capture it. So while all of this has been going on, the orbiter also launched in 2026 and uh, has been making its way towards Mars. So it'll get into Mars orbit in about 2027, and then it'll uh, use its electric propulsion system to spiral down to a low Mars orbit, such that it'll be there in time uh, for the uh, lander's uh, entry, descent, and landing, and so that provide communication for the entire surface mission. Um, once the MAV launches, the orbiter will observe the launch, uh, and then it will fly uh, out towards the uh, container in space, and it will then uh, fly this container into a basket that's on the orbiter, and then capture it. Once it's captured, uh, it'll go through a containment process, uh, which ensures that it's well protected uh, for its journey back to Earth, and then put it into a capsule for the entry back at Earth in 2031. We're designed to be flexible with respect to the kinds of things that Mars 2020 might find, and so we look all over their landing site for candidate places that would make uh, good, good uh, tube deposit locations, and we, and we design for all of these. This particular prototype is sized for 30, but uh, it's still a number that's uh, being considered as part of our sample return formulation activities. How many tubes are actually installed on 2020? 43. Now the biggest question to me as a scientist is that, all right, you're sending up a limited number of these tubes. How in the world do you choose exactly what you're going to sample? With only 43 samples, or 43 tubes, how do you make that process decision of like, yes, that is interesting enough to use one of these 43 tubes on? So I, I'm just an engineer, fortunately. Okay. That's a scientist kind of question. Um, and, and yeah, that, that'll be the job of the, the 2020 uh, science team and the Mars sample return uh, science teams to figure that out during the, the course of the Mars uh, 2020 surface mission. Okay. I'll need to chat with a scientist about that in the future. 
So each tube will have a little uh, individual serial number mm -hmm. etched onto the side of it. Uh, but actually, because we know when we're taking them with Mars 2020, you know which what, what's in which one based on when you took it. So as you're taking the samples, you document pictures of the site around it, what it mm -hmm. looks like. There's pictures that you take inside the caching mm -hmm. system of what the tube looks like before you seal it and after you seal it. And so there's actually quite a lot of documentation. Yeah, it, it turns out uh, the wind on Mars isn't strong enough to move them. So when you, when you set them down in a spot, they'll be there when you get back. I have a prototype here of uh, one of the sample fetch rover wheels, which is being provided by the Glenn Research Center. So this is a new type of wheel uh, that has not been flown on Mars before. It's called a spring tire, and it consists of many springs woven together. And unlike the wheels for Mars uh, 2020, these wheels are compliant, so you can squish them like rubber tires on Earth. And uh, they're very durable uh, because they're made out of a shape memory alloy uh, that behaves very well at Mars temperature. This was a super fun visit to JPL. This is my sixth NASA location that I visited, and each one just feeds the little space nerd inside of me. So huge thank you to NASA Social for bringing me out. I hope there are more NASA visits in my future because everyone is just so, so cool. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping me make fun videos like this, and to you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, maybe share it with the space nerd in your life. And as always, remember to go forth and do science.